Hi YouTube, um, in this video I'm going to show you how to paint this um, nice little thatch cottage uh, in watercolours. It's probably like the simplest kind of um, type of watercolour you can do really, it's quite loose. Um, this particular image was just taken from like a book of watercolours, I think they might have been Victorian watercolours. I quite often buy uh, cheap books from like charity shops and things like that. And then um, because I teach watercolour classes, I can use these images just um, for my students to have a go at. So I'll show you step by step. Um, there's a materials list uh, in the descriptions. So have a look at that uh, to see what paints and things that I've used. Um, but if you're ready, we'll make a start. OK, stage one. Um, what could be easier than this? It's very basic. Um, if you've seen any of my other YouTube videos, um, my more detailed images that I do, like of animals and things like that, um, I shade with a pencil, do lots of blending and things. But because this is a loose watercolour, um, we'll just do a very basic outline. So things to note on this, um, there's a bit of perspective. Don't panic about perspective. The main thing is really, if you look at the, the bottom of the house and then the sort of the middle beam uh, and then the roof lines, can you see how they they all radiate round slightly? So if you imagine if you took a ruler and put them on those lines, you can imagine that they would all converge somewhere to a point. Um, so that's what you need to think about. Just have them slightly radiating. Uh, but it's not too big a deal on this one. Because it's a thatched cottage, it's quite forgiving. You can get away with quite a lot if some of your lines are a bit wonky. Um, next thing to note is... Uh, all the textures for the plants. So what you're trying to do here is just have a range of textures. So rather than just have lots of rounded um, looking bushes, um, you could do some that are rounded, some that are spiky, um, you know, some with you know big spikes, some with little spikes. Uh, you can do some kind of plants that have got long stems, like the sort of foxglove type ones. Um, and or hollyhocks or whatever they are uh, and then you can do some much shorter ones uh, it is it's all about just adding texture uh, and then just trying to rough up some of your you know things like the roof lines and that sort of thing uh, again just to give it a bit of texture okay use some um, yellow ochre really watered down lots of water that gives that sort of more creamy color for the um, base wash on the main thatch cottage um, and then you can use a mix of um, violet and um, English red mixed together uh, and again lots of water um, and you can use that for the sky so you just wet the sky and while it's wet just with water then you drop in that colour into it and just let it kind of flow in that's called wet and wet um, you can also add little hints of the purple to the roof uh, and if you use raw sienna as your wash for the floor area and then again just drop some of the um, purpley mix into it for some shadows under the plants. Okay this is mainly um, mixing the colours and adding them for the plants um, so I use raw sienna stronger for the bush next to the um, thatch cottage and then I've used um, Payne's grey for the uh, sort of tree behind the cottage um, and then it's just various greens um, in the front here. So try and use a good mix of greens. Try and make them mainly neutral. So, um, you know, you can add browns and things to your greens to sort of neutralise them a bit. Try and avoid, you know, there's a green called emerald green, which is, it doesn't really exist anywhere in nature as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> try and ignore that one. Use things like olive green, sap green, um, that sort of thing. And yeah, if they look bright, neutralise them uh, with a bit of brown or a bit of red or something. Uh, that will make a huge difference. Okay, if you add our same mix of um, violet mixed with English red, um, you can use that for the, the beams on this. Um, and then it's raw sienna. Uh, and you can either mix that with a bit of umber um, or a bit of English red. And this is for the um, shadows underneath the roof. Um, and just along the, the top of the roof you can have another sort of purple line as well that helps so this all helps kind of break up and also the door uh, the space where the door is can be done in raw sienna as well 
and also note there are a couple of shadows like underneath plants uh, in the foreground as well. Okay, now it starts getting a bit more interesting. So if you use um, English red uh, with a tiny bit of violet um, for the bricks and apply those on the wall, um, and then if you um, use a much more watered down version of the same purple mix we did before, um, so the violet with the English red, but really watered down, then you can see the angled um, shadows cast from the roof um, sweeping down across the building. Um, those make a huge difference to the effect of the light hitting it. Um, then you can use Payne's Grey for all of the dark bits that you see. Um, or Payne's Grey mixed with a bit of sepia if you want. Um, so the dark that's right behind the house there, bringing the edge of the house forward. Um, and then the really dark underneath the, um, the thatch along the roof line, that makes a massive difference. Uh, you can use some darker green. Uh, to go in uh, to the, some of the foliage, just to darken those a bit. Um, and you can use a bit of sepia in the doorway um, to give those lines down the door. Um, so this all strengthens everything, makes it a lot more contrasty, and makes it look like the, um, the sun is hitting it. Okay, this next step is really kind of beautifying the image, uh, adding a lot of the brighter colours to the flowers. Um, so you can mix various pinks in here for the um, foxgloves or hollyhocks. Um, so something like quinacridone rose watered down. Um, and then you can use uh, yellows, uh, reds and oranges. Um, stronger purple, so you could use violet, maybe mix with a tiny bit of blue, like cobalt, something like that, um, for some of the flowers. You could basically do whatever mix you wanted here, um, or you can follow mine. It's up to you. And there's also more Payne's Grey added and quite strong, so quite a lot of pigment. Um, this is for the lattice work in the windows, so you're just wanting to put those sort of diamond shapes in, uh, leaving the white of the paper to give that effect. Um, and also you could put some Payne's Grey stripes down the door, um, and that gives an effect of shadow in the doorway. OK, you might have been thinking that it looked finished um, in the last one, but if you toggle between the last image and this one, you'll see um, there are quite a lot of stronger colours, and this really kind of gives it a kick at the end and makes it much more contrasty and a much more interesting image. So um, if you look, there's stronger purple uh, shadows on the roof, so it looks like you've got a shadow cast from that um, tree that's behind the cottage. Um, there's also some more purple in, in like the um, on the right hand side of the roof which is like a shadow cast from that uh, kind of growth of uh, foliage going up the middle of the, um, the thatch so these are all things that are going to kind of really help it stand out remember not to use um, purple on its own or violet on its own remember to neutralize it with a little bit of English red it makes such a difference um, much more realistic and then what you're doing as well is uh, just darkening little bits into some of the um, plants, um, stronger shadows um, beneath some of the plants. So you can use like darker greens and things uh, in the plants uh, and then darker sort of purples, uh, darker little bits of Payne's Grey. So I used some Payne's Grey to go underneath some of the brickwork. Um, and again, that just sort of outlines some of it gives it more contrast. Yeah, you've probably heard people saying, um, you know, be careful not to overwork your watercolours, um, and it's important to know when to stop. And yes, I agree, that is fair enough. Um, but there's nothing worse than a watercolour painting that um, lacks contrast, you know, that's really wishy-washy and um, has no kind of depth to it. So make sure you never neglect to put the end stages on which are the really, really dark, you know, kind of corners and edges and that kind of thing that are going to really uh, give your whole painting a kick. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please uh, check out my other videos because I'm going to post quite a few of these on YouTube. Um, and I also have um, a couple of videos of my portfolio if you want to see some of my um, more detailed work. Have a look at those. Um, and don't forget to hit subscribe. 
uh, so you can see anything that I post up in the future.